Pod Dog with me, Joanne Perrett. I am the founder of the Ladies Working Dog Group. Every single week, I will be talking with our community about how you can improve your relationship with your dog and with a community of women just like you. Don't forget that you can win some prizes every single week with our giveaway. All you need to do to be in with a chance of winning is take a picture of yourself listening to this episode of the podcast, share it on your Instagram stories, and tag us at the Ladies Working Dog Group. And if you want to, share your biggest takeaway from this episode with us too, because we'd love to hear what you think. Every single week we go through and we pick a winner and someone wins something exciting from our shop. So definitely get involved if you want to win something. But for now, enjoy this episode. You can do this and we are here to show you how. So let's get started. Hi and welcome to LWDG Pod Dog. This week we have got the fabulous Tara Best of Tara Punter Coaching with us. How are you, Tara? Hello. Oh my gosh, I'm fabulous. Thank you. So excited to be here today. I'm super excited to have you on the podcast because your wealth of knowledge around how people can motivate themselves and improve themselves and personal development is just enormous. So tell me, how did you sort of get into coaching? So I took the very terrifying self-employed plunge back in June 2015, having hated my job, but I had absolutely no savings, £200 in the bank, and an opportunity to leave the job that I greatly disliked. So I took the plunge and a chance meeting led me to working as a journalist and social media manager, which I absolutely loved. And just felt like a dream come true to suddenly be going to some of the world's like biggest equestrian events, working as a journalist, supporting equestrian and canine and country brands with their social media. And I just could not believe my luck. I'd say it was a good couple of months in, I was suddenly getting all of my clients through word of mouth and social media. And I actually had a guy get in touch with me who owned a dog food company um, and he was based in Bristol, just down the road from me. And he asked me if I could do a social media training session with him in terms of how he can better use his social media to generate sales. And I said, yes, you know, I very much say yes and figure it out later. And I just loved it. And I drove home from that session that was in person back in 2016 And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I love this so much. Just suddenly helping someone have that clarity, a plan, start doing things that were really going to help them. I just absolutely loved it. And over the over the years, you know, since then, I've then created lots of different offerings and programs and launched my first coaching program in 2018. And it's just kept growing from there. And I love it more than I ever knew possible. Coaching in the UK, I think, is something that's sort of recently, and when I say recently, I mean in a few year, in the last few years, has really started to flourish. You know, it's, it's quite a um, a well used concept in in um, the states. You know, the idea of having a coach, a business coach, um, a personal development coach, but it is quite a new idea here. How do you feel that you know in the UK your business is developing? Yeah, it's such a good point. Such a good point. So I first sought out a coach in April 2017. I lost two of my biggest clients in one morning on a Thursday morning in April and suddenly was at rock bottom and I had direct debits bouncing back. I had no savings. I had no money. I had nothing. I had a lovely boyfriend who, no, he was just fiance then, lovely fiance, lovely cottage in the Cotswolds. Um, but no idea of how to get myself out of this rock bottomness. And I sought out a coach that I had met at a local networking event. And I remember getting in touch with her tail very much between my legs thinking, oh my gosh, she's going to pick my business apart. She's going to tell me I don't have any strategy. I don't know what I'm doing. The imposter syndrome crept up and I didn't even know what imposter syndrome was then. And I felt really ashamed to need a coach. I had this kind of feeling and it was a really guilt-ridden feeling that I shouldn't be in this situation I should be able to just figure it out I'm passionate I had been in business for nearly two years I shouldn't be in that situation and I I didn't really tell anyone to be honest that I was working with a coach initially um 
because that shame was there. Whereas now I kind of see it as such a sign of strength to have somebody that's like your left hand wing woman, your right hand wing woman, a cheerleader, someone that's there for the highs, the lows to celebrate and get you through the tough times. And I think there's been a massive shift recently with people recognizing that it does seem to be very normalized now. Um, and hand on my heart, I'll never not have a coach ever. What you're saying there is sort of really hitting home and resonating with me because a lot of our dog trainers say that they don't actually spend a lot of time training dogs. They spend a lot of time coaching the ladies on the other end of the lead. And I think when I look at our group as a whole, a lot of the challenges women face is around self-confidence, a lack of belief that they can do it themselves a lack of belief that they should be in the sport, in the industry. And we don't, we're working in very much a trad- traditionally dominated male area. Um, so with women coming to you, I know a lot of women come to you for business reasons, but obviously this coaching can be taken over to what our ladies are doing as well. Where do you start when you really don't feel like you know how to move yourself forward? Great point. Great, great point. And yeah, I completely get it. Um, I think women are built very differently to men. You know, men will ask for the pay rise. They will keep going. They'll be relentless. They won't stop. They're very logical, very action taking. Whereas as women, we are we are much more sensitive. We are um, sometimes at the detriment of ourselves. We listen to that inner story, that inner dialogue that's chippering away all day, every day. Um, And it can be really, really hard. And I think for a lot of people that come to me, in particular, a lot of women, I I primarily work with women, a lot of those that come to me have maybe just lost their way a bit. Maybe they've lost the love or the motivation or the inspiration. They've lost a bit of clarity. And, you know, no matter what situation a potential client is in, the first thing I always talk about is mindset. Now, I fell into the world of mindset completely by accident in October 2018 when I signed up to work with a coach. So this was the second coach I've worked with. I thought it would be all business and funnels and marketing and advertising and all of the doing things that you need to do in business. And the the basis of the entire program was around mindset. And that was such an eye opener for me in terms of recognizing that your mind can either be your greatest asset or your most destructive. And I think that is true in both business and our personal life. It's true in sporting, in hobbies, in the inner story that goes on in our head every day. Because literally, it all starts with you. It all starts with your mind. I 100% agree with you on that. And I see it in our group across the board, you know, this sort of one minute highs, something's gone well training the dog and you're feeling fab and then the next day something goes wrong and you are 10 times harder on yourself when it goes wrong than you were when it went right. We spend a lot of time talking to our group about the importance of planning their dog training and and planning where they're going. What do you think the greatest difficulties people face when planning goals for themselves going forward? I think a lot of people it is understanding or maybe questioning what that goal is. So I obviously do a lot around goals and so many people come to me saying that they just don't know what goal to set. Maybe they aren't sure whether it should be a money goal or a personal achievement goal or a goal to read more or an exercise goal or a fitness goal. There are so many out there. And all I would say is start with one or two. And just think, okay, what are one one or two things that I personally would like to achieve? I think the second thing that really holds people back in that is the belief. You know, we've spoken a little bit about so many women lacking self-belief and it is it is so common. And I think a lot of people will set a goal and then question themselves or set a goal and second question the goal. They'll set a goal and then won't hold themselves accountable. And so often I think there's this massive disconnect between people that actually set goals and those that actually go on to hit the goals um and lastly I'd say accountability having somebody to hold you accountable to the goal is so key because 
you'll set the goal and the the fear will creep in or the who am I to do this will creep in or you know the imposter syndrome or lack of confidence something will creep in because when you set a goal it starts to feel uncomfortable to your mind and your mind will confuse that with a feeling of fear a feeling of being unsafe and your mind will then give you all of these inner stories to say well why don't you just not set the goal stay safe stay in your comfort zone here's these stories to remind you of why you should do that and when you don't have that accountability or somebody that wants you to hit that goal as much as you do it's really easy for you to just slip off with that goal smashing what happens every single time that you set a goal is you have duality of your thoughts and that is basically you will set a goal and you think oh yes i really want to go for this goal and you'll either have a positive thought or a negative thought the positive thought is i'm going i'm really going to do this i believe in it i i'm so excited it's going to be great the negative thought is can i do this who am i to do this i don't think i can do this who am i to even want this it's really important which thought you follow because whichever thought you follow gets backed up by memories So your mind will beaver away into its little filing cabinet of memories and dreams, and it will find memories to back up whatever thought you have. So if you have a positive thought around that goal and you're thinking, oh, my God, yes, I can do this. I I know I can do this. I'm going to hold myself accountable. It's going to be great. Your mind files away and finds memories to back that up. But if it's the negative thought that happens, the who am I to do this? I don't think I can do this. It's really greedy to desire this. I'm not good enough. Your mind goes and finds memories to back that up. And it will find those times when maybe you've tried something before and it hasn't worked out and you felt really silly or you felt guilt or shame around something. So it's super important that you start to recognize the thoughts that you have around setting that goal and whether it's a positive thought or a negative thought. What you're saying there is is such an important part for us to understand, isn't it? And if you haven't been introduced to um, mindset work, sometimes, you know, I say in the world time, we don't know what we don't know. And if we've never picked up a self-development book, a lot of this will seem really, really alien to us because it's, it's not taught in schools as it should be. This is sort of you have to find this by by luck or chance. But I really do believe that your belief is your power. And if you're belief is positive then that's a positive power but if it's negative that's a negative power but either way that force is incredible on on what happens to you each and every day um why do people not reach their goals is it this sort of negative belief that stops them yeah I think often it's maybe that little bit of negative belief that gives them the um like pre-disaster before it even happens I think people also do lose that little bit of love or inspirational motivation for it and maybe just change the goal or they forget about the goal. And I think lack of accountability is something as well. I think whenever you come to start setting goals, having clarity around what the goal is, what it means for you and why, why that goal means something to you is really important. Because sometimes when the why isn't there, it can feel like it's so much harder or you can lose that bit of a passion for it. There's a great saying that says, the bigger the why, the easier the how. So when you think of that goal, why do you want to hit that goal? What does it mean for you? What does it mean for your family or your network, charities you support, for your self-development, for your family? What does it mean for you? What does it mean for others? And what does it mean for that bigger picture? You're really spot on with that because I think a lot for a lot of us, when we start now training our dogs, our goal is we want a dog that listens. But that's quite a broad explanation of a goal, isn't it? And our reason why might be, I just want to listen so that I'm not constantly calling his name. But that isn't going to be enough to drive you through the literally days and weeks and months of training. Because as much as we'd like to think we can train our dog in, in an hour, It is a long term commitment. Do you find that you have lots of conversations with people, obviously not around dog training as such, but the whole idea of when they have to put a lot of work, a lot of time into a goal that they tend to fall by the side? How how do you keep them online? Yeah, I think consistency combined with that little bit of self-belief and connecting to the why is so key. 
Um, I know we've spoken about it before in terms of you just keep going, you just keep showing up, you just keep being consistent. And it's the same whether you're training a dog, training a horse, writing a book, doing something for your business or for your career. It's the teeny tiny little steps that really make the big results. And that's where you will see the big changes. It is the daily work that you're doing. And it's the same with dogs, horses, mindset, all of the things. But so often people have this big dream or they just want to suddenly, you know, have the dog working as well as it possibly can. And they have that impatience. And I think the impatience then can hold them back a little bit. And when they have that impatience and a lack of accountability, suddenly there is that bit of friction, I think, with the goal. It's a very sad thing to say. We're obviously um, working in a a traditionally male-dominated area. Some of our ladies do come across people who who try to to take them off their track, maybe say something that's a little bit hurtful or makes them feel that they've not chosen goals that that are correct for them and maybe they should rethink their goals and I know that when you're working with ladies in business they probably do that as well where maybe they think this goal wasn't the right goal how do you help women who the goal is is important to them the reason why is important to them but they feel it like externally they're being pushed away from it so who we share our goals with is one of the most important factors here because we can have this desire for a goal or this idea for a goal. And you think, oh my gosh, yes, this is what I want to do. And you accidentally tell someone out beating or you accidentally tell a family member or you accidentally tell somebody else and their reaction can sometimes halt you entirely. And that re- reaction might be, really? You, you want to do that? Or well, why do you possibly want to do that? Why can't you be happy with what you've got? Or well, why would you even desire to put yourself in that situation? And the situation is that the people that we share our our goals with often don't get it. It's nothing bad on their path, or it's nothing that they mean about you personally. They just don't get it. And it's the same with sporting. It's the same with business. It's the same with money. But because we share goals with people that don't get our desires, their reaction can sometimes make us second guess ourselves. Um, So I think it's super important that actually you find, I'd say no more than three people, and it might just be one person. It might just be this safe community that you've built. It might just be you, Joe, that they want to share it with, but it's, it's finding up to three people that want you to hit that goal as much as you do, and they wouldn't question it, and they wouldn't say, well, who are you to do that? They wouldn't judge you in any way they'd be like oh my god yes you can do this oh my gosh what a great goal that's the reaction you want and so many women share their goals with a partner or share their goals with a dad who just might not get it and I'm not being sexist in any way but they might just share their goals with the wrong person and it will crush them and it it will put them off setting goals at all that's, that's quite interesting what you said there, because when we started the LWDG as a business, I said to my dad, um, I'm going to charge £1.99 a month for the membership. And I said, do you think that's too much? And that's the, the level of my, uh, I suppose, limiting beliefs about what this group was going to be. And it was never meant to be a business. And he said, oh, I, I think that's quite a lot, Joanne. And I took that on board and I was like, oh, okay. And I we we went out to 199. We launched to 199. And most of our 199 ladies have held on to that £1.99 membership. You know, it's if I look back now, I'm like, that was less than a cup of coffee. But it was because my father he didn't even understand what a membership was, an online membership was. He wasn't the right person for me to ask. I should have asked somebody with an online membership, somebody who'd done it before me, what the answer was. But you, it's talking to the right people, isn't it? And, and talking to people who understand what it's going to take to do what you, you want to do. Do you think that a lot of times we, we do talk to the wrong people about our dreams? Yes, 100% a big yes. The issue is, I think, with anything like dreams and goals and desires, any of these things, we talk to people about them. And then we take on their thoughts or their beliefs as our own. Now, we've got our own belief system. We've all got beliefs in our head 
about how we should show up, about what we feel we could achieve or what we could charge or, you know, so many of these things. Even our own personal belief system is not our own because it's all based on beliefs that have trickled down through generations. So we've already got these limiting beliefs, which are basically negative stories in our own heads. Then we go to somebody else and we say, I've got this idea. I would really love to achieve this with my Spaniel this season. And they're like, well, why do you want to do that? And just suddenly that just makes us think, oh God, this is, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be doing this. This isn't right for me. So we've got our own limiting beliefs. Then we speak to the wrong person. And then we've got their limiting beliefs because I guarantee you, they will give you their perception of this belief um, or of this goal. And they're like, well, you know, why do you want to do that? So I think the more that you can just make sure that it's your goal, nobody can set a goal for you. Nobody. I can't even set a goal for my coaching clients that I've coached for three years because it has got to be their goal. I can help them come to it. I can support them, make the plan, do the launch, do the marketing. It's got to be their goal. And it's the same with the ladies in your network as well. It's got to be their goal, something that they feel that they can achieve. They've got that little bit more belief than disbelief. And it's something that is backed by a why. Why do they want to do that? That's so, so key. I love what you say there about a why because we've spoke, uh, I think it was maybe two or three podcast episodes ago about, you know, if you ask yourself, why are you training your dog? We were talking about commands and cues. Do I actually need this command or cue? And for a lot of people, they don't actually need those specific ones. It's just something that is within the sport, within the industry. So we think, oh, we have to train it. We have to train it. Um, but you might not actually need that for your dog. Your dog might never actually use that command or cue in any way. And this is a little bit like this, isn't it? You could be setting goals because you think that should be what you, you're doing. When actually, when you look into it, it's, it's not relevant to what you want to achieve. We were talking then about, you know, the external sort of beliefs that people give us. What about, you know, we, we mentioned it quickly about imposter syndrome. I'm, I'm, I suffer quite badly with imposter syndrome. Oh my God, who am I to be doing this? Should I be doing this? It's like this negative uh, conversation. I, I constantly have an internal dialogue where I have to tell them to be quiet quite a lot of time. Um, but sometimes that, that, that voice in my head is, is stronger than I am, certainly if I'm having a bad day. Do you think working with women, this sort of imposter syndrome is, is a woman thing? I think so. To be very honest, um, I feel mess, men suffer with it less. Um, there have been so many times that I've suffered it. The first time I ever went shooting, for example, and I was just thinking, I haven't got a bloody clue what I'm doing. I've had lessons, not a clue. Luckily, it was a nice farmer's shoot, so it was all very friendly. Um, but it was there, and I was like, who am I to be doing this? It's that feeling of not belonging. And I think whenever you kind of feel that coming up and you can kind of recognize that in some way, it's almost, again, just taking it back to you and thinking, right, do I want to be here? Because most of the time the answer will be yes. Um, And just making sure that actually you recognize that that imposter syndrome is a little bit of fear. We need fear to stay alive. Like we need fear on a daily basis. We don't need fear to run the show. We just need it in little teeny tiny portions So whenever you recognize that imposter syndrome, it simply is your subconscious mind trying to keep you safe because you're doing something that's a little bit uncomfortable, stepping out of your comfort zone. Maybe it's something that requires a little bit of courage, but to your mind, it's terrifyingly alarming. And it's thinking, God, this is so scary. No, don't do this. Abort mission, abort mission. And it just wants to do whatever it can to make you feel safe because that is its primary function but the disconnect happens when your subconscious mind feels terrified by this terrifying thing you're doing and it kind of feels like its safety is at risk but it never is you know we feel the imposter syndrome and the fear when we push ourselves out of our comfort zone It's not unsafe to push yourself out of your comfort zone. It's just uncomfortable. So I think recognizing that and recognizing that that imposter syndrome is creeping up because you're in an uncomfortable situation, nothing more, 
nothing less. You're just in an uncomfortable situation. It actually takes away the power that that imposter syndrome and fear has over you because you wouldn't be doing anything that's unsafe while stepping out of your comfort zone. And the magic happens when you step out of your comfort zone. So it's recognizing that it's there, it's honoring it, and it's rising above it and saying, you know what? Who am I not to do this? I know it's terrifying. I'm still going to do it anyway. And that's a really lovely way of thinking about it, isn't it? It's, it's giving it the recognition. Because a lot of us, I suppose, we we don't want to have that conversation with ourselves. We don't want to feel it. So we sort of have this internal fight of, yes, I'm listening to you. No, I'm not. But what you're suggesting is that recognition of, actually, I know why you're there. And that's fine. And I know you're trying to keep me safe. But I'm going to go and do it anyway. Thank you very much. I've got a client that has named her as Nancy. So whenever the imposter syndrome creeps up, she always just takes herself to one side. And she's like, no, look here, Nancy. <laughs> she literally speaks to herself as if she's talking to Nancy. And she says, I know you're only trying to keep me safe, but I've got this. It will be fine. And then afterwards, when she's done the scary thing or stepped outside of her comfort zone, she's like, Tara one, Nancy nil. <laughs> and always just has a bit of fun with it to take away some of that negative power that imposter syndrome has. So yeah, recognize it, honor it, talk to it, and then outshine it. Absolutely. Fantastic. I absolutely love that. Um, so lastly, how can people reach you, Tara? Because I we've got a lot of ladies on here who um don't have businesses, but a lot of ladies who do have businesses, um, certainly within the canine world and in the animal world and countryside um, community, how can they get hold of you? Where can they reach you? So I am at Tara Punter Coaching on Instagram. That's my business page, which has got so many mindset tips and self-development things, um, along with a little bit of business and strategy things as well. My personal profile on Instagram is I am Tara Best. That's for all things horses, dogs, farm life, shooting and fast cars, because I love it all. Um, and then my website, tarapuntercoaching.co.uk. Thanks you so much for giving us your time today. Um, you are going to come back in January and join us. We're going to do a mindset masterclass, yes, to set off the 2022 for all the ladies going forward. What can they expect for you from the masterclass? What, how are we going to kick off 2022? with a rock solid mindset and an epic plan. Um, I'm so excited to be hosting this masterclass, my second for the LWDG. So thank you so much for inviting me back. Um, I really want to help your ladies understand how to keep in control of their mind so that their mind can be their greatest asset. It's going to be very much around their personal goals, maybe their goals with their dogs, um, and how they can just make sure that they keep that imposter syndrome at bay or any of the negative ideas at bay as well. So it's not a business masterclass. It's just on mindset and goals for all of your fabulous ladies. I'm so excited. I'm super excited about it too. It is going to be running live for society members so they can join in with Tara Live or you can then watch it as a recording in January as normal. Um, and if you want to check out Tara's last masterclass that was on social media from a personal perspective and a business perspective, go back through the masterclasses and you'll find it there. Thank you very much, Tara, for being with us today. And we look forward to seeing you in January. Amazing. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a pleasure. Thank you.